Welcome everybody to Tales from the Tackle Shop. This is episode no 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 nineteen. We rehearsed that. Yeah, we rehearsed everything in this podcast. What was that song? No 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 nineteen. No 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 no. Don't know. It was sounds it? like something stuck. No 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 no. It was a song, wasn't it? No, Vicar Dibley. No 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 no. And you remember that? Is that the old old? Yeah yeah. It was Trigger in it? Yeah. He's dead, isn't he? We're all nearly dead, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Dear me. He's dead. Mate, we might be dead by the end of the week. Hi. Vaporised. Could be. Well, Gary Glitter reckon we get a four minute warning. Which Maybe all the roach knew it was going to happen, so they've all <laughs> gone somewhere else. Can we blame Russia for the lack of roach? Pike, fish in general. Most people blame me for everything, <laughs> so yeah, blame them. Yeah, we could do, couldn't we? Yep. I'm just worried I can't hear. Just get a little... Don't get... Just, just say something close. Close. That's it. You are a bit... But yeah. stay there. It's perfect. Yeah, I, I get a bit paranoid about the, the volume and the audio. Right, so we've got... Looked at another plane. <laughs> <laughs> Something's happening today, I tell you. Wow. There's planes going everywhere, aren't there? Yeah. There was a big Chinook going over early and all the geese... Not, not the flies, that's what we call the big flies that apparently are my flies. They look like flying chinooks. Have you been big. blamed for the piddly flies? In the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they look like, don't they, little chinook. <laughs> Great big, you know when they've just woken up and they're just like, all docile. Yeah. A bit like me in the mornings. Yeah. Anyway, this big chinook, not a fly, but a proper helicopter went over early. And then I w- went outside and the geese were everywhere. They hated it, mm. honking away. Anyway, that was a airplane. That was, that was um. Just rambling on about a load of old rubbish. Again. Yeah, well, that's what we normally do, don't we? Yeah. That'd be Vladimir Putin. He's checking out. He's obviously, he's, he's obviously worried about rookery waters. Might be checking yeah. out the opposition. Yeah, yeah. He's going to set set up his own commercial carp fishery pet somewhere near Peterborough. Yeah, maybe Chernobyl. That's why he's raided Ukraine. Maybe he's three headed you know. carp. Mm. Yeah. They grow quick. Yeah. They yeah. die quick, you know, wouldn't they? Don't know, it depends. They might be radioactive and live forever, have half lives of about 3,000 years. Mm. Right, I've, I've got my hat on because it's cold. But cold. I look like, it's look not like cold. I look like Noddy or something. Because mm. I can't get it on properly. Okay. Like look like. <laughs> Last week we had Robert Bailey on. I presume his first name is Robert. So, Bob, thank you for giving up your time. And that was very good at talking about the coaching and angling. Mm. Um, I sp- I met- contacted him later on the week. He's- I had a few people get in contact yeah, with him. Yeah, good. so that was good. good. Yeah, that was good. That was good. On a similar theme, we were talking about this earlier. Yeah, I, I worry about this, and I know Alex does as well. Juniors. Yeah, there's a lack of junior sections in a lot of clubs, aren't there? Yeah. Now let's be honest about this. I, it's hard, I, bloody work running I, a club. I think it is. I, well, my. I've thought about doing something here at the fishery. The problem is, in my eyes, I think kids should be encouraged. And like what Bob was saying, the heritage of St Ives and the river. And with March, there was always a Monday night series competition. Mostly me against other parents, but it was a junior match. (laughs) And um, when I was, you know, five, six, I was always looking to when I was seven year old and I was old enough to fish these matches. So... For me, it was something to look look at. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And, and I'm seven next year. Yes, I can fish matches, and um, I've you know I'd love to do something like that here. But to me, it needs to be at March. You know, the river's is part of March. Yeah. It's guys, you can see where we're coming from with this because yeah. what Alex we were talking about this earlier, and this is where I was going with this. It's very hard to run any organisation. Yeah, and then when you try and bolt on a junior, like rugby. Yeah. Right, so yeah. I used to be captain of Wisbeach, so I was involved with the committee meetings. So it was hard enough running the men's side. So the junior section actually in the end was separate on a Sunday, which yeah. has had its own entity in the end because it's that difficult. Yeah. So March and District Angling Association is basically cheesy. Yeah. He does the whole caboodle, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah. yeah, he has one guy helping with the bailiff in, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. So... Alex is saying that he has thought about actually helping out with March and District, but he can't. It's impossible. He's running a full-time business here and a commercial fishery. You couldn't do it. 
best wood in the world you'd love to. Oh, yeah, I'd love, love to You can't, it. because you, you're spinning too many plates as it is. Mm. You can't have another three plates to spin as well. So what we're saying really is, is that is there anybody out there locally who thinks they could pick this up? We've got a great contact with Bob mm -hmm. Bailey, who could push people in the right direction. We haven't spoken to Cheesy, but I'm sure he'd embrace this if, if people had. Yeah, yeah. And we think if one person actually stepped up and said, no, I'm going to do this, there'd be three or four other people yeah, that would step in and help out. It's, you know, I'd, I'd love to do it, you know. I'd think it'd be brilliant to have a Monday night, sort of having a few coach a session, coaching sessions. And I think the, the reason why it needs to be March is kids need to be able to go fishing. So if they've gone and they've enjoyed it, they need to be able to go on their own with their mates and go fishing. Whereas, bike to it. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas here... They can't bike here. It's too far. It's a mission. Yeah. Plus, obviously, it's free fishing in March. It's yeah. easy. They yeah. can get a few maggots, a whip, and they can go fishing. I mean, you do see quite a few kids in March, but I don't know. I think match fishing... If you see any youngsters now, they're all carp fishing. They don't really want to do a bit of match fishing or whatever. Or just fishing is what we... Well, let's talk about this a bit further. So if there's someone out there who really wants to do this, we can, we can help. We can um, facilitate all this for them. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, we can help push, get them through to the correct coaching, which yeah. is important because you need to have that in the world we live in, that documentation. Yeah. Alex will help out with equipment yeah. and bait. Yeah. I will help out with... I will get free lures if people want to do lure fishing to mm -hmm. just give to the children. I'm sure I can get some of the stuff as well. We will publicise it on this podcast for everybody and through the Tackle Shop. And we'll see if we, March and District will do it on their social media, which I'm sure they will as well. So we can cover all the difficult bases that people will struggle with, mm -hmm. that side of things. We just need one or two uh, very responsible people just to step up and go, I will do this. Mm -hmm. um, best one in the world, not trying to get out of it. I, I can't do it. I do too many things as well. Alex, obviously, small business owner, it's impossible, but we will do all the other things or people that we know, we yeah. will get them in to help. So if it's a coaching day, we can get people in to help coach as well, can't we? Mm -hmm. And if it's a special one-off, it could be here, couldn't it? Yeah. But it needs to be based on the river in March yeah. because, as Alex has rightly said, the, the children need to be able to access the water, yeah. and it's ideal, and it's free fishing. So, it's normally got loads of fish in as well. <clears throat> well, all those fish you're catching, I'm sure they're the residents throughout the year anyway. Mm -hmm. And it is a lot easier to catch in the summer. And I do see quite a few kids giving it a go, but they just need a bit of direction. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, the and basics. Maybe, the basics, yeah. So, like I said, that's, that's what we're throwing out there. Uh, if you're keen or you just want to explore this further with us, get in touch with Alex at the shop, get in touch with me, and we'll just have a discussion about it. But... It was just something that we spoke about earlier today, wasn't I've it? Been th I've thought about it for, for ages, but it, it's just, yeah, I, you know, I help out as much as I can, but actually, get yeah. be, I can't be in two places at but once. Also, this is the important thing. It can't be the same people all the no, time. No, no. And it, and it, it's, this is why it needs to be someone fresh mm -hmm. and new and keen. Mm -hmm. It can't be the same. If it's the same people, it stays the same thing. We, it needs to be fresh ideas, fresh faces. And like meeting Bob last week, we knew him, I knew him from last year, but I haven't known him before then. Just mm. meeting him is lovely because it's a fresh face. Someone who's keen, enthusiastic, that's going to bring that extra drive to that area. So mm -hmm. I think that's another reason it needs to be somebody that yeah. <clears throat> we don't know that well who's going to put their hands up and say, I'm going to give this a go. And then we can help get a team around them. I think it would be really... It's, it's something that needs to be done, but it needs to be done by people who've got a passion for it. And I'm not going to do it for 10 minutes. They're going to do it for two, three, four years. And then maybe hand it on to someone else. So it's, it's set up and it's, it's moving. But also, if, you, if you're from another area and you really want to start this, we will publicise it for you. This is not a problem. So mm -hmm. if you want to start something up in your area and you don't know who can help locally, between the pair of us and the people we know, we can help out those extra bits for you if you so wish. So that's just something that we spoke about earlier. I think it's, quite it's a very important thing if we don't, push this we're not going to have a future of the sport because we won't have the youngsters driving it forward in 10 15 20 years time so i think that was something off last week and i know you've been thinking about a long, oh, a long, long time. time yeah 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 cool right what you've been doing this week 
Uh, just shy of uh, nothing. Well, you don't. You don't just do working. nothing. You get you get up mega early, and you go home mega late, and you just. I uh, just working. It's. Um... Did you have a match on Wednesday? No, I didn't go anywhere this week. I went yesterday, but. I don't know, it just, uh, it's got starting to get a bit busier as well in the shop and, um, yeah, it's sort of the lull, not the lull, but it, you see it's starting to... It's the change. Yeah, yeah, it's... When are you starting the matches here on Thursdays again? They've, they've still been every week, we had 17 last week. Wow, that's going to start picking up soon, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm... The, the Winter League, we've got the last round of the Winter League Sunday, so and then we've got a two-day final in a couple of weeks. Once that's out of the way, normally when the river season finishes, that's when our busy season starts. So um, hopefully the weather improves quickly. It feels like it is. Um, but, yeah, it's um, it's slowly changing. I've seen three oyster catchers this week, which that's a sign the birds are moving in. Um the geese are getting bigger and bigger. There's more and more of them appearing and they're not flying off every night like they normally do. So that's another sign that they're getting ready. Um, I don't know, the fish are starting to you get an odd few more fish down the edges now. And Daylight hours, I think it is. That's all it is, it's daylight hours. So. I was talking to a guy yesterday who used to breed koi carp. Yeah. And we are talking about this because uh, I said to him... It was three of us. His mate was talking about spawning. I said, I the pike man here and spawned it. I'm sure it's um, to do with um, the daylight hours, yeah. with a bit of weed growth from water temperature. And he went, it's totally daylight hours. The mm. guy who used to breed koi carp. I went, really? He went, yeah. Mm. He said, it's, just, it's, it's something that triggers the fish yeah. with that daylight throughout yeah. the... And I thought, well, who better than to tell you that than someone that used to do it properly? Yeah. So, because yeah. we always presume, don't we? Yeah. Have you got a customer up there? Huh? Um, yes, because Gary and... Oh, they're going up now. <laughs> so it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Universal language of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, but yes, yeah, so like, because it's... It dep- sometimes it's a bit early, sometimes it's a bit later. That's where I think the, the water temperature changes, mm-hmm. doesn't it? But it's... It's then we spawn within two or three weeks of the same time every year anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't read too much about the Avon Roach project. Have you read the book about that? No, but I must. It's fascinating. Is it? And they was I read a bit, or someone was telling me about it, where the roach returned to these boards this, within one or two days every year, no matter what the weather, and they spawned on those three days. So makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah. How the hell fish know that and where to go? Well, salmon, eels. It's amazing how they well, return. Like these oyster catchers, where they've been for yeah. six, seven months, and now they've come back to the same spot every year. This the fact I didn't know, but it's actually true. Some breeds of butterfly migrate. Really? Yeah. Mm. Which is like... Interesting. <sighs> how? Mm. I know cormorants migrate. <clears throat> cormorants tend to migrate from one water to the next don't they mm. and destroy everything talking about cormorants I went to Hanningfield Reservoir did this you? Is, yes I've been invited onto a trial is there many on there? well uh-huh. so I was invited onto Hanningfield Reservoir and it was a trial set up by the uh, the warden and his manager and they wanted to explore the possibility of opening up for predators fishing mm-hmm. after November when it shuts yeah because it's a triple SI site as well. Oh, right. So we had um, yeah. the birdies watching us as we were going out and about. Now, in October, I'm led to believe there were bait fish everywhere. Sonas were yeah. getting blocked with bait fish and they were catching little perch. But the place was really heavily hit with cormorants, 500,000. All I can say is when I've been out there, it's barren. Right. Nothing. I've had two pike in three trips, and that's it. And I've done better than just about everybody else. It's been an absolute... Disaster's not the right word. It's not a disaster, because it's day's fishing, and mm-hmm. it's exploring, mm-hmm. and it's really interesting and fun. But it's 800 acres plus. 200 acres are a nature reserve, <clears throat> but fish aren't going to go and hide in a nature reserve when the, the main body of water's not pressurised. There's no yeah. need, unless... Unless there's a food source there or something that make them... But not all the fish are going to go in one area. They, they, you tend to get pockets. But going around there, uh, it's a put-and-take trout fishery, 50,000 mm-hmm. stock in every year. Mm-hmm. 
but most of the trout get caught and taken. Yeah, that's yeah. how the fishery makes its money and survives. So there are very few trout, as you'd expect, because they that's what it's there for. But the coarse fish, gone, battered. And I think it's mainly cormorants have nailed the lot. Yeah. 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 It's not overly deep. It's only 50 foot deep at its deepest, so which means cormorants go down a long way. And I was saying to the warden, well, there's, there's no cormorants on here, but now they're all in Aberton at the minute, which is another reservoir, big reservoir close by. And I said, uh, don't you think it's strange there's no cormorants on here? And Artie went, yeah, it's a bit worrying. <laughs> I said, they're only going to be on a water for one reason before they breed, and that's food. They need, what, two and a half pounds of fish a day? I don't know. Yeah, on average. They anyway. definitely uh, affect things, don't they? Oh, well, they North level, to go, destroyed. Absolutely destroyed by those cormorants. Was it must be three, two, three years ago now? It was amazing how many cormorants were on there. And the match results just went, whoa. And ever since, they've never come back because most of those lovely roach and roach they were catching have gone down the river, out to North Sea, sort of five years up in the air. It's not just the ones they take, it's, it's the, the fact that they, you know, if you imagine, I don't know, the fish are hurdled into these areas and then, I don't know, they could get pollution and all the fish die. That's your whole year, year's worth of fish gone. The whole lot. Well, cormorants stab fish. Well, not just that. So they but damage they, them as well. They sort of hurdle fish. Can you imagine them hurdle them into a lock or something? Do you know what I mean? Or they're just pushing fish. Yeah. The fish are that scared. Yeah, yeah. You know, any bit of cover, the fish are next to it. The few fish that I found on Hanningfield were motoring. Like, woof. And I've seen this happen at other big reservoirs when there's been a lot of cormorants about. The fish are constantly moving. They're not, st they're not, they're not staying anywhere. And, it, and sometimes they'll sit straight under the boat. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of cover. Mm -hmm. And other times they see the boat. I think they see it as a silhouette of cormorants. And but it's amazing watching the habitat, what they do. It is, it is scary. You just think, wow. And when you, when you go around places, you actually realise that in a lot of these waters, there's a lot of nothing. Mm. But there well, we, go. we know that for a fact. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Unbelievable. But as anglers, everyone goes, oh, yeah, but there's a, it's the water temperature, it's this, that, and the other. No, you can only catch what's there. And um, sadly, on Hanningfield, a lot of these big shoals of whatever aren't, well, they were certainly not in the main body. I'm still going to give it a go. And people are probably going, he's mentioned a venue. But we've been asked to do it to publicise the water. And the, the, this is a lovely reservoir. And the people that work there are fast, uh, fantastic. So it would be nice if it threw up a really big pike or perch just to give it a bit of kudos. But so we'll have one or two more goes and see what happens. But a funny tale. So when I push uh, the channel, so mm -hmm. I thought I need to start doing a bit more filming myself. And I thought, well, it's all right doing it at Hanningfield because it's going to be public knowledge. So I'm up at half four doing all this daft B-roll stuff from my camera, like half asleep. And I did a bit the night before, because it's dark, thinking no one will know, because mm. I've got this. So there I am, I'm up, I've left. Told everyone now. I've left, well it won't, no, because I didn't catch anything. Oh, right. Left at five o'clock, sort of, oh, get there, I've got um, Charlie Capol Capollo, who's on the boat with me, he's the guy that had the, he caught some clonking perch out of there in 2018, a lot of four pounders, that's mm. where it got its name, mm -hmm. its reputation as a big perch water. Hence why it's a bit worrying where they've gone. So we were going to do some filming. He was going to do a video. I was going to do a video. And we were going to kind of do different things. And then um, I got about half 10, 11 o'clock. And just said, let's just try and... We can't do this. There's no point producing all this footage if we haven't actually got a fish to show anybody. And, yeah, disaster. So uh, if I ever do produce a Hanningfield video, you know I've actually caught something of note. But um, at the minute, all that effort is sort of in storage now. But we'll see if it ever gets the light of day. Yeah, and then on Sunday, I went to Milton Keynes to something called Lurtopia. Now, this was interesting. This was, um, lure fishing is very small in this country compared to match fishing. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you say carp fishing is higher, as in sales or match fishing? Sales? Yeah. Well, for me, it's match fishing, because that's what we all, that's what I really do. But, but when you talk to reps, do they mention it? Uh, different areas, different things. I think carp fishing is definitely bigger the match fishing now but it's hard to sort of put match fishing in a bracket it's 
match fishing is general course fishing as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So it's. I think. Well, I think you said it, both are high. Mm. The biggest the, must be the biggest numbers of participants within the sport within the yeah. UK. Yeah. But I think something like retail. I think three percent is lure fishing. Right. Which I thought was a bit high anyway, but. And if you go general dead bait pike fishing, it'll be 0.00001% because mm -hmm. uh, it's just the way it is. So you can imagine that this thing I went to on Sunday, if you think of numbers, we had a lot of um, sponsored anglers there, one or two, two companies. Mm -hmm. There's only about 100 people, but it's still a good turnout. Yeah. And it was, uh, there was a river and a lake. I didn't know you was going, that's why there was only 100. Or... <laughs> I mean, mate, I don't know. Do these shows, do they actually have pictures of people with fish that they've caught? Right, so if you go to Sweden and Sportfish Masson, there's yeah. 17,000 people go every day. Every day? It's huge. Mm. So it's, it's I'll get that in through the, in the door <laughs> in the tackle shop. Yeah. Well, you do want to, when it gets warm in the summer. Yeah. So, but this, this thing was fairly good for what it is. The guy who organises it does it. It's non-profit making. It's free. It was held at Larford Lakes. Where? Milton Keynes. No, Linwood. Linwood. It is Linwood Lake. Linford. Lin no. Linford. Linford. Linford, yeah, 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 yeah. And there's a river. Yeah, at the yeah, back. Yeah. Loads of lakes there, yeah. So what they did last, before COVID was the last time, a novice paired up with a expert, experienced angler, and they went fishing for... Is it the usual at the back there? Must be, yeah. 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 But this time it just seemed... You've got the like, canal there as well, right mate, next to it. I didn't... I didn't know what I was doing. I just stood there going, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I was just looking yeah. about. So that there was a little, on the lake, there was, they had like um, guest speakers. It was very difficult for the guest speaker because it was windy and uh, it was open. And I thought, mm -hmm. God, that's very difficult for them to present there. Mm -hmm. And once one person's done, these are my lures, how many times can you keep mm -hmm. repeating that throughout the day? But bless them, they did a good job. I saw some people that I knew, so it was nice to catch up. But I just thought, it was nice because everyone was collaborating. Do you know what I mean? There was no backstabbing or bitchiness. It was, lure fishing is really small. Everyone has to collaborate because there's no space for someone being a bit of a knob, if you know what I mean. No, because no, no. you're just going to isolate yourself like an island. You're just going to lose everything. Mm -hmm. So it was, it's a really nice atmosphere. There's a lot of the guys I know who fish the comps who were there, so we had a bit of a catch-up with that. So that was good. But I just thought, yeah, Hanningfield was great. We didn't have caught very little. That's been fun. And then Lynn... Um, your Lertopia, really good idea. And I know there's some ideas to expand it again next year. So all these things are really, really positive because they're, they're new things, really. But again, yesterday, very few youngsters, mm -hmm. which was a shame. I saw some dads with, with, with lads, I think like two, three female anglers. And it's kind of, we got, oh, come on. We need to sort of branch out, don't we, somehow. And we need to get... Um, a lot of youngsters more involved in all the different facets of the sport but that was good that was really good and a lot of people gave up the time just to just to do it so there's a lot of goodwill out there there is a lot, i mean well, let's talk about angling trust winter league not, mm -hmm. the, not what happened on the day but on saturday there were loads of volunteers helping weren't there yeah so i mean yeah. you, you were down at decoy weren't you yeah how many volunteers were down there there's probably 10 of us down there and then there was probably 10 of 12, 13 on the drains. Um, and what were you doing? Um, apart from sulking because we weren't fishing. Um, so obviously, st started the day, went to the draw, got all the scales and boards, um, went to decoy or whatever sections we were stewarding, marked that everyone was on the right pegs. Good job we did because there was a whole team that was all on wrong pegs and one other team had got the wrong anglers on the wrong pegs um so luckily enough that was you know that was seen and they had time to set up and move lakes and stuff um luckily it was at decoy because if it was on the drain that's a quite a big would they have been disqualified if the match had started and they'd been in the wrong place uh yeah i would yeah they would yeah. have been yeah yeah but that was all sorted um, it was, um, then went for breakfast about 12 ish, went back, tried to keep away. It's hard when you're at decoy and, and all the drains really, I'm not a fan of people walking the bank, especially on the drains in bright sunshine, frost at night. Yeah. Um, 
you know, we're good at making up these uh, reasons. No, it, why does, nothing, it but, does make a big difference. Um, yeah, so, and then just start the match, obviously, end the match, and then wade in. So we all had a couple of lakes. Uh, some of us had three lakes to weigh in. Um, got it smashed out as quick as we could. Um, and pinged all the results over instantly so the Angling Trust could work out what they were doing and score all the points and um So did you you had did you have did you collate them on paper and then transfer it to a or how did you do that bit? How was that? Obviously Angling Trust have the boards. Yeah. Uh all the names on pegs and so forth. And then we just went round and just marked them off. And then when we went round to weigh in, added the weights up, they checked it, we checked it, signed, happy with that mate, yeah. And then obviously just took a picture on WhatsApp, messaged them over to right, okay. James. Yeah. So they could start doing the results straight away. And then obviously took the boards back straight away. Oh, that's interesting. So there's no kind of like internal system. They just use a social a social media platform. What's happened? Just... Yeah, so we just messaged back to the organisers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is very simple, I suppose. And, and then Angling Trust have this um, forum where as the results are being updated, people can see. So... Excuse me, you could be sat in the Harry Smith score when you go, oh, oh, and the results keep changing as they're adding more and more boards on. Obviously, it doesn't tell you the top three teams and top three in each section type thing. Yeah. Because it's, but you can see roughly work out. So basically, without all the volunteers, there'd be no way this this could have run. Uh, no, no, no. So when no, it, who it's, would... it's not just it's not just you know the effort we did because. Not being funny, we don't really want to be steward in the Winter League final. We want to be fishing. Was it many? T- was it your team doing it? No, we. There was five or six from us. Uh, there was obviously mainly all the Mark One lads and some Peterborough lads as well. Um, obviously, the Hot Rods and Image lads were fishing it. So um, yeah, just it was the East Midlands Winter League joint effort, really. I suppose. But what I'm saying is, it, if you haven't got the infrastructure in place, yeah, it's irrelevant about the big organisational part. It needs because. It needs to be trusted people going around weighing in. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, then, yeah. then the correct picture being sent with all the whole board on. Yeah. You miss one person's peg off, it throws the whole thing out. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's quite a um, intricate mechanism that needs everybody feeding into it. And luckily, you're all experienced match anglers. You know exactly what to do. Yeah. 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 It's um, <laughs> the phones. Um, I'm waiting for a phone call as well, so mine might go off. I might have to. Um, eat humble pie but yeah. we'll be okay um right so that's another good example though i think of um the yeah goodwill. but it's not only that it's you know St- uh, stan and fizz have organized matches at bennett practice matches yes um yeah bob fitzjohn's obviously organized a lot yeah you know, hell of a lot yeah i think I mean, he's, lost, he's lost the stone the amount of pegging he's done <laughs> this year poor boy has to do march and then has to nip <laughs> over and do 20 foot and still gets in time to fish the hajack matches so um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of effort from everyone really to there try is, and you yeah. know, people uh, Kai with the peg in and the maps and organising and it's you know we we're proud to have it in the area and we want to you know keep it in this area as long as we can. Um, the fishing was probably the worst it's ever 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 been. It's unreal how bad. We'll it get onto that in a yeah. bit. Yeah. One thing I'm going to say though. The drains, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Do you, I just, so I don't, so I don't know a lot of you guys because yeah. I, I, I'm in a different part of the sport, and we kind of meet when I come here and we do this. Yeah. So I know you very well, yeah. but but I just wonder the, the guys, the Anglian Trust to organise this. Do they actually realise how much goodwill has been pushed back by the locals? It's like if they put it on anywhere else, they're never going to get that amount of goodwill. With all the with people, uh, but they're never going to. It's an amazing gesture from all the guys who are involved with it mm. locally who want to get through to the final. Some brilliant anglers that didn't even get through are still willing to help out. You, you'd find yeah. some people have a sulk and go, oh, "Well, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I can't be, bo- I can't be asked. I didn't get through," and that's sadly some people's attitude. You guys, no, no, we're going to help out, whatever. And I think that is incredible. And you get that with a lot of... This goes back to angling clubs that we've been speaking about for all the three years we've been doing this. Angling clubs won't survive without that mentality from the hardcore mm-hmm. people Definitely. that continually run it. And I just think, 
You look at clubs. I mean, I've played a lot of cricket and rugby. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. These things wouldn't happen no. without all these brilliant people who have been involved running all these uh, clubs and, uh, I don't know, social well, clubs. Well, I mean, we were, we were, you know, we had this conversation before, but the amount of revenue that angling is for March, this is why we want to do the junior things, because it's part of March. Yes. You know, yeah. not just... People in the summer, March is absolutely rammed with um, anglers, and they're not fishing the drains like they used to. They've all always come down from Sheffield, Derby, wherever, you know, Manchester, Liverpool. There's always been coach loads of anglers staying in March and fishing in March, and obviously they come to decoy here, float fish. Now they fish the commercials yeah, more. Yeah. So if you're going out in March on a Saturday or Friday night. Chances are there'll be a gang of Sheffield lads in there drinking. You think the local pubs, how much money, how much revenue they get. And then you've got, obviously, for this Winter League final, you've got all the anglers coming down in the week practising. And then you just, it's immense, really. It is. I was just wondering if, you're exactly right, but the av I say the average angler, does that sort of thing exist? But you know what I mean? Yeah. I think there's too many people take too many people for granted. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's good just to stop, reflect, and think, actually, I wouldn't have that fishing if it wasn't for not just one person, probably a whole little army of people. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, everything's connected, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think people just need to stop thinking and go, actually, yeah, I need to actually do a little bit to put... It goes back to the junior bit. If everybody did a little bit to put back into the sport, it would be amazing. Mm -hmm. I think there's too many people that just don't do anything. And that's my little frustration. It's like, we've all done loads in the community. And I think it's just, everybody just did, if it's just a little pick, just a little yeah. pick. A little pick's a big thing. But just take a yeah. bag, pick up some rubbish, do something. You haven't got to shove it all over social media. Just for your own, you know, a bit calmer, put something back in. And you're right, local businesses, really, the forward-thinking local business should think, I need to pick this up and run with it. Because if... We're going to go for a curry tonight, ship in, we'll see Paul. No doubt he'll start doing things. I know mm. he has done in the past, mm. wanted to help out the litter picks. But we'll mention them on the podcast. They'll get mentioned in tackle shops. It, again, just helps them a little well, bit Well, that's more. it, you know. People say, oh, where's the best place to do this in March or wherever? Do you know what I mean? They come all the time. Oh, where's the best place? You know, go to the Griffin or, you know, you've got the Cromwell, the Griffin, you've got Causeway. Um, Weatherspoons. Weatherspoons. Yeah. Um, there's another one down flat. I've got a spare bedroom that's at £300 a night, five in a room for any anglers for next year for the Winter League each. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but just mind the ghost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I saw one last night. Did you? Yeah, near yeah, the window. No. Well, the, the pub door. Really? Between my living room and the hall. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. I see them all the time. It's the weird That's the reason why we do the podcast here and not at your house it anymore. It is the weirdest thing. I got very comfortable with it. Mm. It was either that or, I don't know, but just people just wandering in the back door. <laughs> no, it was definitely, it was like, you get a double take, you go, ah, oh, the back. It's weird. And I hear voices. That's probably because I'm mad. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I, I sit there and go, there was definitely somebody talking then. Yeah, it's peculiar. We need Carol to come round. Who? Oh, Carol, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, we need to tell this tale. So we're going for a curry tonight. This is the Tackle and Bates um, Christmas team curry. Is it? We tried one, one before, but... Um, Everyone was ill. There's only me and you that went, wasn't yeah. there? And we ended up having a... We met in the curry house. Um, help me out here. Carol and Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul. Now, Carol's claim to fame angling-wise is she's beat Bob Nudd. No, she's won a March Open. She's won a March she's Open. She's won a March Open. She has, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we were in the ship, weren't we, afterwards, talking about ghosts, and she, she's a believer. And Paul was going... No, no, <laughs> no. not having it. <laughs> you know and she said, like. well, you won't see them because you don't believe. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's part of it. They, uh, they can sense if you're receptive or not, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, we need to hold a seance in my front room and see what happens. Probably release all the poltergeists. Mm. That's probably where all the fish have gone, scared off by the ghosts. Maybe. Don't know. Maybe. No. What are we talking about now? I don't know what you're talking about, no. 
Are you done talking about ghosts? <sighs> don't know. Don't know. Should we do some match results before we get onto the Winter League? Yeah, do you want to do your Boston ones? Or? Yes. Derek. D- it's Derek. the last round, wasn't it? Who I need to meet. He's, he's good. He's now messaging me on YouTube as now. On, on YouTube as well, which is oh, good. Right. And they didn't have a match last... Mm-hmm. They had a match on Sunday, but they didn't have a match the Sunday before or Wednesday just gone. Yeah. So I have the results Well, they from, didn't have one. No. I don't know if it's weather-related or... Oh. But they had one last Sunday. So they had one... I sh- what I should have done is a bit of homework and read his message first. Mm-hmm. It's long. Yeah. Yeah. So bear with me. I shall just decipher it. So this is from last Sunday, February the 27th. Yeah. So not, not yesterday, because mm-hmm. now Monday. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so confused. So this is from yesterday. They didn't have one last I'm Sunday. I'm sure he got a ghost in his house here, right? <laughs> this is from yesterday. Okay, here we go. First, mix stamp. Oh, wow, I've just seen the, the weights. Mm-hmm. Two pound two. Yeah. Second, Don Green, 114 and a half. Yes. Yeah, got to get that. Third, Mark Cook, 114. <sighs> Did they have Stan Ground Jeff's three pound lump harmonious? It wasn't windy, was it? No. 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 Fourth. Guess what? Wait, uh, sorry, if Cookie was third with 114, what did fourth place Pete Harker get? Pete Harker. I'm going to go £1.3. £1.13. Oh, nearly. Hope the scalesman had his glasses on. Mm. Mm. Flim. And then fifth, Dave Dean. Yeah. What do you reckon he had? Pound. Come on, there's a bit of a theme going on here. 111. 8. 111. Oh, 111. 8. Yeah. It's the best one okay. ever. Okay, fifth, Derek Skinner. What did he have? Th- th- one pound nine. One pound ten. Uh. So, um, just like that game, <laughs> isn't it? Year out game or whatever it is. Guess the age. But Alex, they're all basically one ounce between virtually well, every. Yeah. That's, to be honest, fair match. Well, I just hope, like I said, should have shut a few more maggots down some of those um, purchased yeah. mounds. They'd be all right. Okay, section winners. So, some of these might be by default as well, due to who weighed in what. Section one was Pete Harker. Section two was Brian Blackmore. Or Black- Blackmore, Blackmore. Yeah. Derek was third in section... No, sorry. Derek won section three. Um, right, series final table. So, oh, no, yeah. It's y- finished. Finished. Who do you think won it? Mick Stamp. How did you know? Because I've seen it on Facebook. No. <laughs> No, I, I know he was there or thereabouts. I think Don Green was up there as well, was he? Is Mick Stamp, the, you know the two guys that came here? Oh, Oggy and... Uh, Pogo and Laney, Stevie Lane. Is Mick Stamp the guy they said that they would have him fish for them to save their life? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. 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 So, because obviously I don't know people, I do apologise. Mm-hmm. But they said Mick Stamp is an amazing fisherman. He, yeah. he can catch fish from anywhere. Yeah. So he has won with 10 points. Yeah. Second was Dave Dean. Oh, Dave Dean. I don't know Dave. With 11 points. And third was Don Green. Yeah. With 12 points. So that's incredible. It's a bit like your winter league. It's, um, first was Mick with 10 points. Second, Dave with 11 points. And third, Don with 12 points. That's incredibly close. Mm-hmm. Fourth was Nathan Watson with 16 points. Fifth was Kef Wilson with 17 points. And equals six were... My favourite name, Beanie Sawyer, mm-hmm. Mark Cook and Steve Miles with 19 points. And the best total weight was Mick Stamp with £37.13. Right. Best individual match weight was Mick Stamp with £13.3. Um, <laughs> he's like <laughs> the, the Man City of Wayne Fleet, isn't he? Oh, he's annihilated him. Yeah. And the wooden spoon, the angler with the lowest weight to weigh in at every match. Yeah. So actually... It's quite good. You've yeah. actually... Kept at it and not given in. Yeah. So you, you, you could fair, actually be... Fair dues. Probably a very good angler. Has some real bum draws. Is a guy called Barry Drake with £14.5. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that's been a fantastic set of uh, results that these guys have had. They've had some very good matches and some really hard matches yeah. in the same venue. Which is reflecting the things that we're talking about about March. But yeah. in Lincolnshire. So... Yeah. Uh, Derek, thank you for sending those in. They're Obviously, some proper old school squat anglers from back in the day, you know. Yeah. I mean, I know when I worked at Westwood, there wasn't re- 
the 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 drains had sort of really stopped and it's good to see that it's all coming back again really it's a shame that the, the boston drains aren't producing because it's another venue you know it's a bit like around here the only place they're going is steeping and you need different venues to freshen it up but i'm gonna talk about that in a minute because that's what mm. someone else i met on sunday but yeah. um I, I know they're not boston district but they're guys that fish in boston district aren't they yeah they're all from that area. yeah so yeah. um obviously Dark, I'm not, whatever matches you've region. got yeah. <laughs> don't stray off the path <laughs> i tell you what's really weird right so you only got to go 20 miles into lincolnshire and the accent changes dramatically oh mate it's like where we are here we can go to whittlesea and they're in all speak northern Northern. So we're about, they're northerners. You just listen to people from Whittlesea, they're northerners. I think it's Peterborough. People from Peterborough try and pretend they're from a big city and they're not. No. But you go to Lincolnshire, right? Yeah. It changes, doesn't it? And it's like, yeah. it's like very much like going to Hull. You go, how the Accents in England are amazing, how mm. they change. Right, Boston District, Cookie, Mick, uh, Derek Skinner, all of you lot, brilliant for getting in contact. And yeah. this has all happened because you contacted us. Mm -hmm. So over at Angling Clubs, please get in touch and we'll do our best to highlight what you're doing. That's been a great series of events. And I know speaking to those two guys that came down, yeah. it's helped in that area promote the fishing again. Yeah. So that's got to be really good. Right, when I was at Lertopia, Lertopia. before I forget, I bumped into someone called oh, DB Angling. DB. DB, which he's a YouTuber. He's got oh, right. like nearly 60,000 subscribers. You're into all your numbers, aren't you? you love this makes a difference. Because yeah. he's very well known. He reckons he gets about 20,000 views from UK and then the rest is across the world because of his analytics. Mm -hmm. that's, not, that's most of the lure fishermen. It's yeah. got to be, if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, there won't all, be, there won't all be lure anglers watching them. There are probably not that many lure anglers in the country. So, I think there's more than you think. But that's, that's, an in, that's quite... But that's the problem with us, especially this area, it's a bit seasonal, isn't it? Well, what he, I was saying to him, because this is what worries me, I said, how do you video where you go and people don't wreck it? Because this is what happens. Mm. People are desperate for spots. I mean, if I show people pictures up there, the, first, the only question they ever ask me is, Where's that? where do you catch it from? And that's why I won't tell people. Yeah. Because it's not important. Go and find places yourself. Mm -hmm. and they don't. They want to jump on your pi piggyback all the time. So I was talking to him for ages, lovely guy. And I said to him, don't your spots get ruined? He went, no. I said, he goes, I never see anybody. And he's from around, is it Doncaster? North Lincolnshire. Right. Is that Doncaster? Or, or, is my geography yeah. really out? Hull. He's about an hour from Hull. Down. Down. So, yeah. Well, it's Link, like Gr the proper Lincoln, isn't it's it? It's North Lincolnshire. Scun uh, Scunthorpe, Brig, Grimsby. Right. Yes, around there, there yeah. yeah. So he does a lot on the, on the drains out there. On huh? the Ancol. And I said, what about the match anglers? This is when you, yeah. he went, don't see any. No. I went, what? He goes, I've seen three, I think, this season. And he says, on some of the places I go, the silverfish is immense. He mm. said, there's so many silverfish there, but they're not fishing it. I thought, that's why? Um, don't know. Have they all gone to commercials? No, or? no. I just think, like here, for example, the, you know, the income has been, been not very good at all this year, which normally they migrate in and load of fish to catch but that's been awful as well so i don't know it's you know what anglers are like they we see a venue and it fishes well and we have three or four years where we fish that venue and then all of a sudden another venue comes and the other thing is different clubs own different waters and not every club wants match fishermen on their water it depends and not every club wants party you know every club's different do you think because of social media the, av the average angler, here we go again. Most anglers have got lazy. In what way? That they know what's been caught in most places, therefore they won't go looking. Um, I don't know if it's that or if you've only got one day a week to go fishing. And you want to catch something. You want to catch some fish, don't you? And you can't blame anyone for that. You know, Yeah. it's the same old thing with commercials, same yeah. old story, but... The way the natural venues have been fishing up until this year, you know, loads of people have been going back onto natural venues. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know. 
it's uh, I think as anglers we you know do I need to what, take wear these or can I get away with boots you know same old thing isn't it when I was a kid I used to fish with blacksmith's arms and bear in mind there were loads of little pub clubs weren't mm-hmm. there all the mm-hmm. clubs were associated to a pub Reg Sutterby mm-hmm. would go out every Wednesday or Thursday and Darkie would go out Brian Rudland and one or two other guys associated with the club not organised, but they they just go and try different venues. Mm-hmm. And if one of them caught well, we'd have that match, that, that venue, yeah. on the Sunday. Yeah. And it was always done like that. So on the 16th foot, on the certain stretch. So I remember one match from Cotton's Corner. We had a I've match there. have seen a normal angler on the 16th foot for years. But I don't understand why people don't do it anymore. I think I think the problem is, 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 is you'll see a few in the summer, won't you? Fishing for tension and that. But there's no roach and... Other fish to catch. It must be. I can't so, believe there isn't. But they're in. There it must be. I can't believe that. There, there is, isn't. <laughs> there must be. They're in. You so, don't see that many cormorants on there, do you? So where have the fish gone? Are they? They migrate, don't they? No. no. In the summer, fish spread out, don't they? Yeah. They don't stay in. They breed. But in the summer, on these drains, you don't see loads of roach. I can I'll tell you exactly what the bream do, and I've seen them now. I've worked it out. Yeah. When it's warmer, they spread out into little pods. And I tell you yeah, why. Definitely. Because they've got the water temperature's higher, therefore their um, met- metabolic rate's higher because they're cold water species. Yeah. They're reliant on the water temperature, therefore they need to feed more. Mm-hmm. If they stay in a big group, there, there isn't enough food for that big group. No. Therefore they split into pods and they go and, they go and feed. And as it, as it gets colder again, sort of October time, it's like the, the gathering of the clans, they meet back up and they stay as a really big shoal over the winter because yes. they hardly feed. Yeah, but I'm on about small fish. But roach, must, what do they do? They migrate. They, they, are, they are a sink or swim, don't they? If they don't go in numbers, they're going to get eaten. Okay, so do we think there's been a mass predation on the silverfish? I think there's, there's a mass predation on silverfish, I think. Something's majorly gone wrong with spawning or something. Um, I think the floods had a massive impact on the fish. I think people are, oh, you know, you can only swim against the flow for so long without giving up, can't you? Yeah. Okay, um, so what, what do we need to do about it? What can we do about it? The only thing we can do is just clap our hands when we see a cormorant. That's all we can do and say, go away. I'm gonna, in America... The DNR has a massive stocking uh, plan over the whole of the country. Yeah. And they, for muskies, for example, they will hit certain areas of certain states. as Because muskies do not now breed very well in most of these lakes. They're very poor at reproducing, mm-hmm. Lots of, which I'm not going to go into now. So they've always had a stocking pr- program since the 70s, I believe. Um, and it bass. They yeah. stock different strains of bass into lakes and well, all sorts. Like this Avon Roach project, isn't it? You know. So, we need the Environment Agency to seriously look at what... Because th- this is, there's obviously a problem. Yeah. And the problem is, we haven't got the stockfish anymore. But also, we've got a problem with predators. Because yeah. there's no point stocking and then having all the fish wiped out again by cormorants, otters, whatever takes them... For- I was going to say foreigners nicking fish. That would be very politically incorrect of me to say that, but I'm going to say it because that's what actually happens because that's culturally what happens. If anyone disagrees with me, just get in touch with me. We'll have a conversation about it. But I bet there's about 1,500 people on there have gone, about time someone actually says what's happening because this is what's happening. But our natural venues have got... There's not a lot left. And it's... Who's responsible for it, you know? I mean, obviously, as a commercial... Everyone thinks the answer is, if it's not fishing for it, is to stop more fish. Now, that isn't the answer all the time. How many cormorants nick your fish? You know, you not can't many. be watching them 24-7, But you haven't you? got flocks of cormorants, are you? No. But what I'm saying, getting at, is if the fish aren't feeding for some reason, there's a fish around you, you think, well, I know the fish are in there. Why aren't they feeding? So you think, is it oxygen? Is it habitat? You know, um... Is there too much bait going in? Is there, you know, all these things. Is there and you might you can change control. one thing yeah, yeah. and all of a sudden it starts fishing again. Yeah. And it's like, oh, where have all these fish come from? They've been here the whole time, but they just don't want to feed for whatever reason. Yeah. And 
I don't know, maybe looking in, maybe, I know, well, it must be three years ago when Spolt come in and was talking about crayfish and mitten crabs. We don't, we can't see what's under the water, but maybe they've had an impact on... They must have impacted somehow. You know, yeah. on fish eggs and bits and yeah. bobs like that. Um, you know, if it was barbell that people are trying to introduce gravel to make them spawn and things like that. So, I don't know. You know, we, obviously you can gain a license to shoot five cormorants a year. Um, you can wing as many as you want to. Right. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's... It, if it just kill them. No, but obviously this, it's all well and good like I say, stocking a load of fish, but if the habitat's not right, surely the habitat needs to be looked at, reason why it's yes, not. Yes, it does, yeah. And then if they go, well, everything's fine, it's just cormorants are eating every single fish, then... There's lots of variables. You know. But some variables are bigger than others, if we're honest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. right, there's lots of variables. But it's just... For angling to flourish, we need a really healthy number of anglers going onto the natural venues. Which the natural venues have never been as busy as the last two years. I just never. said to you, where, they're, they're, where are the anglers? They're not going on the natural venues. They are. But they're going to the same places. They're not, yeah, they're not exploring. Yeah, because of access. Or are they being lazy because that's where the fish are? Or well, do they both. know? Both. If they walk or go to that old place they used to go to, there's nothing left. Mm. That's what I'm saying. I don't but see anglers it, it doesn't, exploring. What I don't, it's like Raverley's a prime example. What's that? Oh, I used to love Raverley. It was brilliant years ago. The fish haven't, they've not come back. No. So, it's like, all we're doing is we're just moving from one venue to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, and this shoal of fish is just going down. But, you, you know, everything works in cycles, doesn't it? And then all of a sudden, oh, Ravely's solid again for three or four years, but it hasn't been like that for ages. 16 foot used to have a brilliant roach population in mm. the winter. We, I remember as a kid, Day's Bridge, Exmoor Bridge, that section there, yeah. used to hold the roach. And I remember the guys smashing holes in the ice. This is mm. It was like when we had proper winters. Yeah. They would smash holes in the ice with bricks, and within an hour, they'd be catching pound plus roach. It was incredible. But mm. these roach had to be found, and people would yeah. work at it. Hilgi was roach mecca. Well, Fordham Bridge, yeah. Um, when it first opened up, the, the cut-off channel was amazing. But there weren't the cormorant problems then. So roach have been nailed by cormorants because they're silverfish and they can see them. It's easy for yeah. them. Yeah, I mean, I know we're banging on about roach and that side of things, but there haven't been many tench either this year. Do you know what I mean? I just... Th th there needs to... What, what I'm saying is we need our environment agency to plough so much more funding into the whole of this because this mm. is it's huge. It's mm. not just the fishery protection... It's the whole ecosystem needs looking at. So I see this thing when they go down on the lark and do a survey of a marina, which is stuffed full of fish. Well, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that's where fish go for protection. The angling club was complaining because the, the river was devoid, but the environment agency going, yeah, but they're all in the marina. No, they're not. There's fish in the marina for protection. They should be in the river as well. Mm. But there's something wrong. Mm. There is something wrong with what's going on at the minute. Old course, the Nina March. Big, that's a great case study. This year, what has happened? We don't know. Hopefully next year, if we have the rains early, it should come back to how it was. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, then we know something's gone wrong. There's been a, a major problem somewhere. But we need people who are trained, scientists, being paid to do this, to actually be spending an awful lot of time doing it. The problem is, Alex, in this country, angling isn't taken very seriously. Whereas in America, it's a massive billion pound business. Mm. It's taken incredibly seriously. And I think this is the frustration because there's so many dedicated people to angling in this country. Mm. We're talking about the beginning with all the goodwill that everyone shows. Yeah. This is where the angling trust have got to step up. You know, want to be the national governing body for our sport. Don't fight that. Don't do the little things. This is big. We need to make sure the sport is safe for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And that means kids into the sport grassroots and protecting and growing what we have there are issues major issues and we've only highlighted one or two of them mm -hmm. but if i went out with my pipe rods on a drain you could, you could say andy do that drain i will quite happily leapfrog it 
And I don't care which drain you pick, I know, oh, blank, 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 blank. Yet 15, 20 years ago, me and my mate Alan, we pick a drain for the season. That's one of the waters we'd hit. We'd always pick a different one. Mm -hmm. And we'd go, right, we're going to start there. And one of us would fish it once a week, mm -hmm. and we'd leapfrog it. And we'd work out what was where, because we'd pick up enough fish to get an idea of what was going on. Yeah. But if we do that now... We don't catch anything. And this is the other thing, using pike as an example. They're the apex predator, or they were before otters were re-released, in that water, or before humans were taking them, because yeah. nothing predated on them. So they were a good uh, measure of how healthy the fishery was overall. <clears throat> if you had a balanced pike stock, loads of jacks, a few doubles, the odd 20, it was a really healthy water, mm -hmm. because it was sustaining itself. Now we have unbalanced fisheries for pike all over the place for lots of reasons. The main one being that they've been taken, uh, loads have been taken at the lower level. There's not nothing coming through. So you can't gauge what's a healthy water anymore from doing the old school leapfrogging. So it is a, it is a major problem. There's loads of things going on. And um, like I said, we don't want angling to be just on commercials. No. Because that's the way it's going if we're not mm -hmm. careful. I know you're saying there's loads of anglers on the naturals, but it's just in the same spots. And that's the worry. Yeah, and this, your winter league qualifiers and this winter league is a prime example of that, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Sorry, I've, did, we didn't do the other match results. No, you moved. Was that a bit of a rant? Not as bad as it normally is, I suppose. I didn't mean it just came out. Yeah, it was like it's just natural. <laughs> it's like a big zit just being yeah. popped. It just Yeah. But um Yeah, so we'll carry on with the match results. So we've got the Whittlesea Saturday boys was on um Beggars. Um match winner was Dave Rao, six twelve. I think he had a nice billy in that and bits and pieces. Um the runner up was Chris Daniels with four four. Stephen Windmill Smith, we're going to call him now. That's his nickname. He sent a comment and he wants you to fish opposite his other windmill. Opposite, yeah. 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 Apparently there's no fish on his camera. Uh, well. Has he been goading you? No. No. Um, so Stephen Windmill Smith, because he lives on the windmill, £4.3 and then Jeff Stanground, total B, £3.8. So it's mega really considering how... They've managed to find a few fish here and there and their matches aren't big weights, but people go because it's a match and it's, you know, it's a match. It's not the banter. It's, yeah. good. it's great it's, what they it do. It is great. It yeah. is great. Whether it's one with half an ounce or one pound eleven and a half ounce, it's, it's great to see. Um, Ramsey, so Sunday there was again at St Mary's. And this is the other thing I'm getting at, is it's the same venues being fished week in, week, week out, which... It's all right. All right, we're going to go and fish the narrows this week. Three people turn up because they don't they're want no longer going to catch anything. That's what I'm saying. So it's catch twenty two, isn't it? The venues Excuse where the, the fish are are getting more pressure than they would normally, but, but that's because they're the only place you can catch fish. Um, so match winner was uh, Mark Williams, uh, eight pound six. Mar Baker, Steve Baker, seven pound five. Paul Kilby, 5.15, and then Kev Malt, £5.7. So, crap weights again, really, for what St Mary's is all about. Um, not many roach, just little skimmers and bleak and odd little rad. Um, the roach have properly disappeared. Um, so that was Sunday, and then uh, Wednesday they had a match, same venue again, as always. Um... Doing my professional look. That's it very unprofessional of you. Was, uh, you first 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 was Kevin Malt, 10-10. Runner-up was Dave Ravely Rawlins with 8.14. And third was David Steele's £8.2.5. Brother of Benjamin. Yes, I believe so. They've the, actually been here today. Have they? Yeah. yeah. Do they come as a pair? Normally, yeah. 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 Getting their practice in for when the uh, season ends and they start coming in the over 60s. 
They got no chance, though, have they? Because uh, Keith, Catfish Keith, Cat, uh, Catfish Keith. Colgate Keith. Yeah, but he uses cat feet. Oh, well, cat meat. Cat meat feet. Yeah, cat yeah. meat Yeah, Keith. part of the pussy patrol. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the pussy patrol's down to two through the winter, and then soon as uh, March the 14th come, there's about 22. Yeah. Couldn't get it out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. So, um... No, John, uh, no John Taylor mentioned this week. No, he was help stewarding on Saturday. Was he? Yeah. That's good of him. He was on the 20 foot. Um, so those are the club matches locally this week um, Deeping St James have you got their results no he hasn't messed me with anything so, I've just uh, checked there's nothing on. no no. so Deeping St James uh, St James we did look but I couldn't find anything on Facebook so please set, if you don't publish the results until Tuesday say from the weekend we record this on Monday it's, we can't read them out no so you have to Derek's great what he does he just messages, messages me the whole lot on a Sunday night yeah or on a Wednesday night, so I've got it. So that mm-hmm. that kind of approach is really mm-hmm. good because then, even though we're very unprofessional, look for our phones, we've got it. We can oh. read it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you need to lift your game, mate. Look at the technology, honestly. Um, well, you earn so much in the tackle shop, you could build us a podcast. Oh you? yeah, could do. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Good idea. <laughs> um, can you imagine that podcast studio. Yeah, like Guru's. Yeah. Yeah. We could have some scantily clad waitresses serving us our cokes and things. Dream on. Um, was, that, was I politically incorrect again? Yes. Oh, who cares? You I'm are good. a Fenland boomer, aren't I've you? I've given up. Now. Yeah. yeah, I've done so well um, for two and a half you know, years. I'm, I'm, being, I'm being professional <laughs> yeah. here, you know. Yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. Um, we've, we've, we've turned... We're just going to say it as it is. Is that, is yeah, that right? Yeah. You've definitely got I think everyone else will go about time. Imagine him in about seven seasons' time, what you'd be like. We're doing it naked. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that? And we get on the table. Okay. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Be like the seat, like Jabba the Hutt in Star Wars. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, right, so moving right, on see swiftly. See, we three years, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, <gosh>. moving on. <laughs> moving on to the, the main event. To what Everyone's been... You know, up and down the country. I don't know how many different leagues there are, but there was 26 teams entered this year. Um, how many qualifiers were there then? Hmm? Do you know how many qualifiers there were? I think there was probably, I don't know, 30 teams, you know, able to fish, but uh, 26 fished. Um, what, some didn't turn up? Yeah, well, I don't just... Yeah. Well, how come their places don't go to like the third place team? And the... um, I don't know. Because that's crazy. Well, yeah. I mean, if you, if you, you got to remember, some of these leagues are, they're not all like our oh, East Midlands Winter League where I it's know. dog eat dog and, you know, it's, it's the be all and end all. But it's, um, you know, we've got a venues meeting on Thursday. So, you know, we have a venues meeting the year before. You know, it should be like the Champions win- League where you have, winter league. Like have a, each country has a grading and you get a certain number of teams in. No, we all sit around on a table, all, all, all have sandwiches and it's proper, mate. It's proper Winter League. Um, oldest running Winter League in the country, I think. I, I think it's brilliant. This, this one yeah. has to be the highest quality one in the country. I'd, I'd very, I'd, I think it's hard to say that. The same other teams, teams Alex, always get through from what I can see. Barnsley always get through. Door- I know they're really good teams, yeah. but if you've got the same teams coming through, mm. obviously they're very good teams. Well, but ha- maybe because they're good teams, that's why they win every time. But yeah. you know, we've we've got a real. But if four league. teams didn't make it, then those places should be offered to the other leagues that are really high quality. Because can you imagine if you got jumped? If guys, we've got a chance. Are we in? Yep. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It wouldn't. I don't know. I'll give up. That's what I would do. I should be. I should be like. In char- I should be in charge of. Um, God help us. <laughs> sorting yeah. out Putin. Just give me a button. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, so it all come down to this one match. You know, the hours and hours of preparation and days off in the week practicing, and you know, teams coming down and practicing for the final, and every week going. Uh, it's going to be hard, it's going to be hard. So, 
the same old teams were going to be there or thereabouts. We all sort of knew that. There was a lot of people saying, oh, you've got to draw. And, well, it's winter fishing. You've got to draw whatever, you know. Um, so I expected the drains to fish better than the match, like the practice opens the week before. But um, pff, how wrong were we, really, basically? Um, you know, I fished the drains a fair bit and... I've never seen them fish like that, as hard as that. Especially Benick, you know, uh, in a, in general, that's been more consistent than what March has. You know, steady five, six pounds. Not big weight, but consistent. Um, certain areas that you need to avoid and areas that you need to, to probably win, but it just completely switched off. Completely switched off. Now, I, I don't... Everyone's got a reason why it switched off and bits and bobs but I don't know okay we had bright sunshine and a frost it's gone from quite mild and then a frost which can make a big effect on any venue um, but I don't know it just sums up the year really it was you know when you've got Lee Kerry trying to catch fish next to his keep net which in a certain extent you've still got to have skill to do that it's still it's probably fair do you know what I mean but it's just it's just Shit, yeah, it you know, is especially yeah. for us locals that you know we take pride in the local yeah. venues and you want anglers to be here and you you know you do a video of catching 30 pound on the 20 foot and it's like look how good this is and then people turn up and catch one perch or do you know what I mean it's it is a shame but you know hopefully they'll stick to the same venues and hopefully they'll be loaded fish next year our friend and friend of the show won it overall he did drains. indeed, Siwai. Brilliant. On the drains, yeah. yeah. Good old, that's brilliant. I watched, uh, I, I didn't get a chance to look at any of the drains. Um, obviously, you're listening and see what's going on. But Simon, he rung me on the, when he drew, and, and he sort of said, oh, I think I'm one from the bridge. So I was like, well, you know. Had he uh, watched the video? I reckon he had, you know. I reckon he had. I, I was he, he using a diver whip? No, he'd be using a hydro whip. whip. But yeah. they are also stocked at Tackle and Base. Yes, yeah. I think he had about 16 made up. Did he? Yeah. So I think he could have done with a few more. But um, he he had a 8 kilo 210, which by the 20 foot standards, what's that, 18 pound? There were 20 and they're 8. Yeah. 2.25 times 8. Yeah. 16, 8 times. Which... No, you are right. Like Eighteen. Yeah, yeah. which is, is well, an yeah. eighteen, nineteen yeah. pound, isn't yeah. it? and um, that's a you know, that's a low weight from what the twenty foot's been fishing. So you've been needing sort of thirty five pound to win. Yeah. Um, but I think he caught some bob nuds on the waggler and on the whip, similar to sort of how we've sort of been explaining. I read in the video. his. It was exactly the same. He started on two and a half meters. Yeah. And then he, I think he tried different um, distances and then went across on the wagon. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, cracking weight. I bet he's well chuffed with that. I bet he is, yeah. yeah. And then runner-up was the guy next to him, Brett Cooper. He had 7,990, which I think he caught a few fish late on the bottom. Um, and then Helen Dagnall, again, framing 7 kilo, 600. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, well done. And Colin Mayer, 6 kilo, 910. So... Not as big a weight as we were thinking, but still decent weights. Yeah. Um, and then moving over to decoy, um, Steve Butler from 11 on Six Islands had 79 kilo, 200. Uh, Steve, 79 kilo? Yeah. Steve Ford, Gordon Lee Lad, uh, 17 Elm had 76 kilo, 625. You can tell what I'm going to do now, don't you? Get yeah, times 2.2. I was just going to go kilo. And then... Bon Toft, he catches some fish, he does. 15 on you, 67 kilo, 350. Cool. And then Harry Rushton, 64 kilo, 675. So that's 79 some really kilos big is 174 pounds. Yeah, not bad days fishing. No. Um, but, the, the, but this this is, you know, it's, it's totally different fishing. Was decoy very piggy? Uh, it's winter carp fishing. So it's going to be, yeah. It is, you know, I mean, you've got. Steve Butler was 79 kilo, 200. And then sat on the next peg is five times world champion Alan Scott form, was second on the lake with 24 kilo. Can't catch what's not there. Exactly. Yeah. You know, these fish aren't aren't moving. No. It's um, 
it's, it's it's mad but that's commercial fishing and these lads that fish this know what it's like yeah you know it's there's pegs that can produce and then are like fly and then all of a sudden the fish ain't there and they're as, as pants as the rest of the pegs yeah. Yeah. um so yeah fish fish well fish well um so obviously the team result is what everyone goes for um everyone was sort of barnsley 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 you know and then all of a sudden black horse they had got a good score and it was like who's the top three and it was good because there was a bit of suspense there do you know what i mean so um I do eighth was Oxford, seventh was Sonu Press Innovation Northwest with sixty four, Daiwa Who Are Dorkin had sixty four, but they had two section wins. Saints were fifth with sixty two, fourth was local outfit Brown and Hot Rod, so well done to those yeah, guys well with sixty one, and then the, the top three were, were quite way ahead of the rest. Third was Matrix Lee Tackle and Bait with fifty. Runners up were Press Innovations Black Horse, which is a sort of a localish team with 46, and then the unstoppable Barnsley on 44. So, um, well done to those guys. You know, it's they win everything. Who was Simon fishing for? Uh, who are Dorking? Dyer really? Dorking. Dyer Dorking, yeah. 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 Yeah, 64. So, I mean, they did really well on the drains, Dorking, um, but they had a couple of duff pegs on decoy and. You just can't, you just can't carry eleven or twelve when you're against the world's best in Barnsley with forty-four. You know, yeah, two last, and you've got half their score in two anglers. You've got <laughs> yeah. another eight to come. Yeah. So yeah. they're just so consistent. You know, they're all, they're all on it. They're all just awesome set of anglers. Well, in most of those teams, no, in all those teams, yeah. there'd be a lot of awesome anglers. Oh, every. Yeah. You know, the standard is unbelievable. I bet, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it's great that it's held around here. And like I said, I'm not wishing to repeat myself. It's great how many local people helped out to make the event such, yeah. a, such an amazing event. I mean, even though the drains were going to be pants, we knew we were going to... People knew a month beforehand. I saw one guy, I don't know his name, put something on Facebook. What's Helen's team? Osset? Osset, yeah, yeah. He was part of Osset, and they were struggling during the week mm. last week. Mm-hmm. This because he mentioned her name from last Sunday's match. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he that they knew it was going to be hard. Mm. Cause they, oh yeah, they'd been putting a lot of time in practicing, and they yeah. they had they had worked out that it was going to be just a, a really really hard task on the drains. But like we said, that's mm. don't look good for Sunday, does it? Mate, back in the eighties, the weights now would have been un- unthinkable. That's been brilliant. Yeah, no, I, I mean Bennett was seriously awful. <laughs> 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 and March was much better. It was. It's just yeah, frustrating. Yeah, you know. So what's happening? I couldn't even sleep Friday night thinking oh, I hope it fishes well tomorrow. You were that worried about it? Yeah, I was. I want. I want. I want everyone to catch a few fish. But yeah. Yeah. No, but everyone knows that it's not. No one's going to be put off because everybody knows. Yeah. That's the that's the good thing about this. Everybody knows. It's not as though it's you can't blame somebody. It's just nature and what's happened this year. Mm. Hopefully, but it's it's good to see hot rods coming forth. It is, yeah. From low, you know, yeah. Sort of flying the flag locally. I think Image were twelfth overall. Um, so yeah, all in all, that's the end of that one. Um, hopefully, Sunday it picks up for the Hayjack. Last round, are you guys still winning? You are, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. still winning. Um, hopefully it's not a banana skin like it was on s- Sunday and blanks and different bits and bobs. It's going to so. be hard, isn't it? It is, mate, yeah. it is. Um, to be honest, I'm looking forward to the end of the season. I've never, ever, ever... I'm normally like, oh, it's the end of the season, oh, gutted. But no, actually not. I'm looking forward to the end of it this year. We were talking about this earlier. I'm a bit jaded. I'm very jaded. Yeah. I fished a lot had a brilliant season but now I need a little break I think there's lots of things mate I think it's Covid yeah all the things that all Maybe the ang- fish got Covid well we've had to deal with a lot not blame it's not, it's not a fault it's just a reality of what's happened and all that's taken stress out of people um, the weather's been weird it's been a bit cold and, it's not been cold cold but it's been a nasty cold with the yeah. wind and that, t- that gets into your bones a bit for you guys the local fishing's been absolutely awful compared to how it should be yeah um and we'd do a little break, and it'd be nice to get some sun on us and a bit of heat back into our bones. And um, it'd be nice to, yeah, just reset. It'd be really good. Cool. Is it? Oh, 
So, anything else you would like to add? No. no. Just before we finish, um, can I just thank everybody for the... Co- we get loads of comments now, which is Good. really nice. So, What about it, your beard and stuff? No, nothing. No. Oh, did anyone phone you? No. From the last podcast, you said some guy no. gave a pizza. No, I, I, no, he still not rung me back and said, where's my pizza, so... <laughs> I thought you were going to get loads of phone calls this week. No, don't encourage him. Yeah. Well, what I was about to say is phone Alex at 12 o'clock at night and leave him for loads of voicemails. Yeah, yeah. Failing that, can you put comments on the YouTube channel and obviously keep giving the thumbs up because that's so important for getting the video really propelled through the algorithm. And the last thing is that we're having the Tackle and Bates um, team curry tonight, the Christmas oh. special. Yeah. And um, if you join us at the Gurkha Spice, you'll get a free curry. Alex is paid. No, I'm not. Mate, this is safe, because this doesn't go out till Wednesday. Oh, right. Yeah, so... <laughs> 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, I know, that, was, that wasn't very funny, but it, made, it tickled me when I thought, about, I thought I mentioned that earlier. No, so, uh, yeah, we've got the whole team coming out tonight. The whole of Rookery Cafe are coming. No, they're not. No. No. Be me, you, Timir. And maybe we can get the old farmer out as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right, not long to go, guys, to the end of the season. Good luck, everybody, in the Hayjack on Sunday. Yeah, I hope everyone gets a bite or two. Yeah. It would be nice if just had some decent weights. Yeah. And, uh, what, 500 grams? You see, Jeez. you've got to do it in old, old money. That's, what, half a pound, is it? Just under. That, yeah, about. Uh, that's six. Eight. Jeff Tuttleby. Can you imagine Jeff trying to do it in grams rather than pounds and ounces? Can you imagine half an ounce? What would that be? Yeah. 14 that's grams? problem, isn't it? Yeah, that would really confuse the old uh, Stand Ground boys, wouldn't they? They've got to do it in grams. Right, everybody have a great time this weekend. There's not long left. We've got two weekends left. Three, two. So the season finishes and then we'll be on the commercials. We'll keep going for a bit longer. What should we go up to April? If you like. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got a few more podcasts left in us. And in a couple of weeks' time, we're going to do a, a road trip special. Celebrity road trip. Yes, yeah, so just not get, coach trip, road trip. Just to give everybody a heads up, if you are listening on the audio only, we're not we can't put it out on audio only because we're going to record it with a camera. Yeah. We're going to Scotland to look at the Dyer factory. This that's not for two weeks' time. So yeah. I'll give you a heads up the week before, but you won't be able to hear us on audio only. You'll have to watch it on YouTube. So um for that week, I'm afraid if you're driving to work and you're one of those guys that listen in the morning, which I know there's quite a few people, I'm afraid you're going to have to get your phone um, Wi-Fi sorted out so you can still hear us as we have a road trip. Cool, we'll talk some rubbish then, won't we? Eight hours, but mate, it could be 16 hours potentially just on the car. I'm thinking 16 hours in a van with you. <laughs> I've, had, I've had really bad gas lately as have well. You? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it could be, yeah. yeah, it could be dangerous. I'm sure no one wanted to know that. No. Let's finish this off. Right, that's this has been Tales from the Tackle Shop, a Fenland Fishing TV production. <laughs> <laughs>